2.4d, least common multiples with variables. To find the least common multiple with variables, we're going to do the same as before and use all of the unique factors. And we're going to assign the highest exponent to each variable. Let's look at how this works in example one. Example one says find the least common multiple of a to the third, b to the second, c, and a squared, b to the seventh, d squared. As you can see, there are no numbers involved in this question. So we can simply go straight to using all the unique factors and assigning the highest exponent. Let's start by writing down all of the unique factors. There's an a, a b, a c, and a d. Now, step two, we need to find the highest exponent of each of these. If we look, a has either a three or a two. So we pick the higher of the two exponents, which is a three, and write it in our answer. Next, we look at b. B either has a two or a seven. Seven is the higher exponent, so we write that in our answer. Next, we look at the C. Since there's only one C, we just have an exponent of one, which we don't need to write in. Lastly, we look at the D, in which there are two. This means our answer is a to the third, b to the seventh, c, d squared. Remember when writing your final answer, the multiplication dots are no longer needed. This is our least common multiple. Let's look at example two. Example two asks us to find the least common multiple of six x squared z and eight x cubed y squared. Remember, we must first use prime factorization or mental math to determine the numbers. We have a six and an eight. Eight is the larger number, so we will be looking at the multiples of eight. Eight times one is eight, and eight does not divide by six evenly. Eight times two, or the second multiple of eight, is sixteen and sixteen does not multiply or divide by six evenly. Next is eight times three, which is twenty-four. Twenty-four divides by six evenly to get four. This means that twenty-four is our least common multiple for the number portion. Remember, you can also use prime factorization in which the six would have been a two and a three, and the eight would have been three twos, which would mean that we'd have two to the third times three, or eight times three, which would still have gotten us twenty-four. As you can see, the mental math is much easier when we have small numbers such as six and eight. Now, we must write down all of the unique factors for the variables. We have an x, a y, and a z. Now we must determine the highest exponent on each of these. For the x, we either have a two or a three. The three is the higher exponent, so we write it in our answer. Next, we look at the y's. There's only one y on the second term, and it has two y's so we write y squared. There's only one z, and that's in the first term. It doesn't have an exponent, but remember that means that there's only one, which we don't write a one in our exponent either. This means that our least common multiple is twenty-four x cubed y squared z. Remember, when finding the least common multiple with variables, you still use all of the unique factors and you still assign the highest exponent to each variable.